ओके गाइस वी आर लाइव सो हे एवरीवन दिस इज मी हर्षल जैन ए के विराज एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बिल्ड पार्ट टू ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट ऑन गेम ओके सो इन फर्स्ट डे वी सिंपली बिल्ड द यू आई एंड वी मेड द बॉल मूव एंड ऑल्सो वी मेड द पैडल मूव विद द कीज जेड एंड एक्स ओके बट नाउ यू कैन सी दैट द गेम हैज बीन कम्प्लीटेड दैट इज दिस इज आर फाइनल गेम and i'll show you how it will be completed okay this part will be covered today and you can see that as i'm playing the ball is moving okay so if uh, ball hits this user paddle and you can see that it moves with the computer paddle also so the computer paddle will basically move with the ball's height okay so uh, you can see that if the ball hits the left hits the left side then the points are increased okay so yeah this logic will be covered today and if i just miss the ball if i just miss the ball somehow and let me just try to miss the ball okay you can see the points are increased but if the ball isn't missed you can see that it's working fine also the ball will ball speed will increase as i have increased the velocity as the computer and the human plays the game so let's first try it for a while okay let's play this game and you can see that it's little bit increased and yeah now it's getting difficult so yeah difficulty also increases with time you can see that now the speed is increased and i have started to enjoy this one but if somehow you miss the ball then automatically the ball will come to its original speed but yeah let's play it first okay okay so yeah i lost it so yeah that's the game where, that's how the game will work and uh, let me just uh, shift myself a little bit more downwards okay i guess we can't all right so i guess this will work and because i think some of you might not be able to see the game or code properly that's why i am shifting the screen okay but yeah i guess this will work okay uh, so uh, you can see that almost you can see that the paddle is working and if i just play the game the ball will move uh, in the opposite direction if i hit it with the paddle okay so this will change every time i hit the ball and the angle of the ball will change by some degrees okay i have set default as 45 degrees and i'll explain the logic but yeah the game will work fine all right so now i guess we can continue and all right so uh, before moving forward i wanted to show you uh, one thing just check out the description you'll find this link uh, basically it's the link for of full stack bootcamp course by geeks for geeks so you can come to this uh, website okay the link is in description you can check out the de description you'll find that and you can come to this website this course will be uh, will uh, will open up and let me just take you to the normal page so yeah this page will open up and just enroll and start this course so you can see that it's it has everything you which you require for becoming a full stack developer if you want to become a full stack developer you can follow this course so it's a free course free bootcamp you can check out this one and in the live section you can see that we have our two upcoming sessions one is on january 21st and other one is january 22nd so you can uh, check them out on that day and the links will be provided here for the sessions so they will be zoom meetings okay uh, and if somehow you aren't able to watch these meetings you can check the recordings the recordings will also be available here okay so this was our free full stack bootcamp course do check it out and after this uh, i wanted to show you my github repository so before moving forward uh, please visit my profile github.com/virajj014 this is my profile just visit this profile and don't forget to follow me here and yeah here we can see that in the repository section i have uploaded the js underscore pong uh, game okay the repository is available here so you can use the source code for your purpose and if you somehow don't find the source code you can simply just search the name here okay so if you type jsp you will find that all right so this is our game part 1 and part 2 will be uploaded today after the stream or if i get time in the end i'll just upload the code all right so this is the github repository all right and now after this let's start with the project so uh, let me open first yesterday's project okay so this was our yesterday's project and i'll open it in vs code and yeah i hope it's visible enough and yeah this was done yesterday so please watch part 1 that's available on this geeks for geeks development channel 
okay youtube channel and you can find the part one in this channel i did this live stream on 14th january okay so you can check that out all right so uh one more thing i let me just open it with live server so please install the live server extension if you haven't it's in vs code okay so i have opened this server and you can see that till yesterday we did this okay you can see that the ball was moving and uh, the paddle was also able to move but nobody is able to score and also you can see that the computer paddle is not moving okay so this logic will be built today and now i am going to show you how can we build the logic first so uh, before actually jumping into into the main code we'll simply first see the uh, some some of the logics which will be required so i'll take you to a presentation which i have created uh, it took a lot of hard work so please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel geeks for geeks development all right so let's uh, go on with this presentation and i'm going to show you this one all right okay i hope you are able to see this presentation and yeah so this was the first uh, slide which i have uh, explained yesterday okay basically uh, what uh, what it said was that if the x and y are negative then the ball will move in this direction if x and y uh, if x is positive y is negative then ball will move it top right direction if uh, x is positive y is po positive y will move in uh, bottom right direction if x is negative y is positive then the ball will move in uh, bottom left direction so these were the directions and uh, you can check this by manipulating your code so this was the code and how can you manipulate this one you can see that initially we have given minus 2 and minus 3 so since we have given minus 2 and minus 3 the ball is moving in top left direction okay so this logic was built yesterday and if you change the uh, uh, numbers of x either positive or negative it will work that way okay but in i have initiated the game this way you can change the numbers if you want but i i thought that you have to start with some numbers okay so i have chosen minus 2 and minus 3 okay that's some random choice you can choose any other numbers for vx and y these are initially num initial numbers okay automatically these numbers will change when the ball hits the uh, paddle automatically the direction will change and so on okay so these are some initial values which i have written it doesn't matter uh, you can put any values if you want all right and also with bigger values the speed will increase okay so just check that out how at what speed you want to start the game all right so if you want, want to start slow you have to choose smaller values like two three four like this all right so that's up to you after this this was our first logic which we used yesterday now before moving forward i wanted to show you uh, one key concept which we are going to use in the logics that's offset so offset is nothing the distance between the parent and that particular uh, division or tag you are targeting okay let me just give you an example very simple example suppose uh, you, you know that we have the body tag okay this purple represents the body tag okay i can call this purple color okay so light purple color so this is our body tag and inside this we have this yellow rectangle so this is our game box okay so basically body tag contains game box division yeah it contains and inside game box division we have our ball okay that's the code says okay you can check out your code also and you can see that this is our body inside this we have game box inside game box we have our ball okay we have other stuff too but right now i'm just taking an example of a ball okay so inside the game box we have our ball and here if i say ball offset top that simply means distance between the top of ball to the game box top okay you can see that this is the difference okay this is the distance so that's called ball offset top so if i say ball offset left so it simply means distance between left of ball to left of our uh, game box okay so this is the distance between the left of ball and left of our game box that's called ball offset left all right so in javascript terms we definitely write in the code way but this is some lame term lame english terms which i have used okay so yeah this was some simple logic of uh, getting what's offset property okay so this will be used in all the logics which we are going to use and instead of offset you could have used margin also but i think offset is good because uh, it will work for every screen uh, screen size and every device you want okay so offset is really great i have used this one all right so after this 
this was some some basic knowledge after this just watch this slide carefully okay so uh, you can see that here we have our user panel i hope it's visible here we have our user panel and here we have our user panel and here you can see that the distance from top you can assume that this black rectangle is our game box all right so from the top to this paddle top this is our what this is our paddle offset top okay which i have explained right here the distance is paddle of uh, uh, whatever uh, element you are uh, checking for right now it is ball but here we have our paddle so the distance from top to this paddle top is simply paddle offset top that's what we call it in normal english all right similarly if we want to target the bottom how can we target we can simply add the paddle offset top with the paddle height okay this is the paddle height the whole paddle has some height which will be added and we will we'll get the distance from bottom to this top okay paddle bottom to this top so this is uh, suppose we named this as, as b okay so our game box height is whole height okay this is the whole height and uh, simply i have just marked this these things right now it's not it's of no use right now but i have just marked some things similarly this red this red lip, uh, line represents game box width okay this red line represents game box width and i guess you aren't able to see this right now so i'll just show it via this presentation all right so yeah now you can see that we have our game box width as red color all right this is a red color line uh, horizontal line this is our game box width full width and here we have uh, we we can see that if we want to get the distance c distance that is the left of paddle left side of paddle and left side of game box that distance is simply uh, okay i have written uh, something wrong here but let me just correct this first all right so some of you might get confused with this one this is simply nothing uh, you can call it paddle offset left okay paddle offset left it's not ball offset top i'm sorry it's paddle offset left okay so the distance from game box left to paddle offset left okay uh, to the left of paddle is simply paddle offset left so this is c and again if we say uh, if we talk about d d is nothing but game box left to right of the paddle okay game box left to the right of the paddle and here it simply means paddle offset left paddle offset left p a d d l e o f f s e t l e f t plus the width of paddle okay plus the width of paddle so that's some basic knowledge which is required so you can see that we took out the distances very easily from offset okay so that's the basic uh, logic which we are going to use and also just watch these pictures carefully so uh, i'll just increase the size instead of making it a presentation so you can see that by the way this tool is canva i have built the presentation in canva i forgot to tell about that so if you want to make presentation uh, simple presentation you can use canva because uh, it's easy as compared to figma i built all my website designs and everything in canva okay so yeah here we can see that if i am talking about height of pedal it simply means from top to bottom this is the height okay again if i am targeting the width of pedal it's from left to right of the paddle okay this is the width of paddle if i'm talking about vertical center that's the height divided by 2 if i'm talking about horizontal center that is width by 2 okay so you can see that i have uh, marked some uh, readings here okay they will be used later on again you can see the same for the ball okay if the width is taken out for the ball it's the diameter if the height is taken out it's again the diameter if the vertical center it's again the radius and if the horizontal center again the radius okay so i am actually taking out the distances uh, inside them okay i'm not comparing it with game box but inside these or inside them okay so you can see that the vertical center is basically radius okay vertical center is basically radius vertical center distance is radius again the width of the ball is diameter again the height of the ball is diameter okay so these were some basic basic re readings and you can just see them okay they will be used later on and after this let's talk about some more logic so please uh, if you don't understand this you can comment below or you can uh, just message on live chat Uh, i'll explain uh, i'll explain that 
again okay it's not uh, in a hurry i'm not in a hurry to explain everything in short but you can ask that again or you can comment below i'll just explain the logic again all right i know it's a little bit of tough concept to grab on but definitely you will get this okay if you try this on your own you will get this so uh, i can do one more thing i'll just share um, this presentation in the description if i get okay so i'll just share this presentation in the ppt form in the repository or something all right so later on you can check the repository you can find this presentation and in the ppt form so for come uh, for reference you can watch this presentation all right so now we are going to talk about something that if i want if i want distance of paddle bottom from game box top this is game box top okay black container is suppose the game box so this is the game box top and this is paddle bottom okay this is paddle bottom so the distance is simply paddle offset top that is this red line okay this red line is basically nothing but paddle offset top you can see that the distance between top and this top is paddle offset top plus the paddle's height this is what distance of paddle bottom from game box top okay again if i talk about paddle distance of paddle top from game box top it's nothing but paddles offset top all right again if you want the distance from left to the left of paddle you can see that the distance is nothing but paddles offset left all right again if you want the distance from left left of the game box to the right of the paddle you can see it's nothing but uh, paddles offset left plus paddles width okay this is some width of the paddle all right so after this same logic can be seen here if you want half of the distance half uh, like half of the width or half of the height of the paddle you can simply see that distance of paddle center distance of paddle center from game box top is nothing but paddles offset top plus paddle height by 2 okay this is what it says again from left we can see that offset left paddle offset left plus height uh, sorry width of paddle divided by 2 width of paddle divided by 2 so this is the distance okay you can see the markings also i have made a simple plane which passes through the centers okay so this will be a better reference for you all so that's some simple logic which is required again these are some uh, methods which i am using okay just try to understand this so that it will be easier to get the position of paddles and build logic for that all right so these are some paddle logics which are diagrams and uh, some readings which i'm going to use later on again after this same is for the ball if i want the distance of uh, top game box to the top of ball it simply balls off to uh, offset top again if i want uh, distance of game top to the bottom bottom of the ball it's simply nothing but balls off offset top plus the diameter of ball okay again if i want from left okay balls left distance from the left of the game box it's simply nothing but balls offset left okay again all right i just have taken this too far again if i want the distance from right of the ball to this left of the game box it's nothing but balls offset left plus diameter okay and if i want the half distance that is distance of ball center from game box top it's nothing but balls offset top offset top plus some di plus the radius of the ball it will take me to the center again if i want from left side it's nothing but balls offset left plus radius okay so left side uh, offset for ball and then some radius uh, radius it will take me to the center okay from x axis to center all right so this was another uh, representation of the balls offset and that's how you can calculate uh, some offset if you want now we are going to talk about the main thing which is collisions how will collision happen okay so this is a very important concept which i am going to use and it's required to understand this first before writing any code i'm not writing any code right now because uh, some of you might get confused how this formula came that's why i'm explaining this via the presentation then we we'll later on jump to the code definitely okay so this is our collisions and now just understand this so collisions can happen in four types okay so number one is this you can see that
okay here you can see that here we have our paddle okay here we have our paddle so this is what this line represents what this white line represents what it simply represents distance of paddle top from game box top right it's representing that now again look at look at this ball look at this ball just watch this bottom okay bottom or bottom line what does this line represent it simply says that distance of bottom of ball distance of bottom of ball to the game box top to the game box top so i'll just copy it and paste it here okay so now it's easier to see so if if this is greater if the distance like suppose the distance is uh, i can say that the distance is distance is 500 pixels from the top okay the bottom bottom position of the ball is 500 pixel from the top and the top position of paddle from game box top is suppose uh, 499 pixels so you can see that the ball is a little bit below little bit below from the paddle that means that we are comparing the heights okay right now we are just comparing the heights we are not compared comparing it from left or right we are just comparing it from top okay it's little bit in same level okay you can see that if the paddle height is 499 the ball is little bit below little bit below that's that's uh, that's why i have uh, taken the ball a little bit below like this okay that's why it's a little bit below because i have assumed that there will be a some little thing okay some little more pixels of the height which will actually make our collision logic to work okay so you can see that if both the heights are same if both the heights are same if both the heights are same you can see that if suppose i am taking 498 it simply means that ball hasn't touched this one okay ball hasn't touched this paddle that means the collision didn't happen okay now if it became 499 then it's a collision okay if it became 499 then it's a collision ball has just touched the paddle it's a collision okay we can say that it's a collision and now if the ball's height bottom height is 500 then so definitely it's a collision okay ball has gone a little bit below that's why it's 500 pixel so yeah you have assumed that this is 500 pixel but it's actually ball's bottom ball's bottom height okay ball's bottom height are uh, from the game box top and this is nothing but paddle top okay paddle top height from game box top so if distance this distance is greater than or equal to this paddle top height then it's a collision all right so you must have got the logic again we can say the same for if its height if its height is less than paddle bottom height if uh, if ball top height if ball top height right now in this case we are taking ball top height okay it's reverse right now here we were taking ball bottom height and paddle top height but now we are taking ball top height and paddle bottom height okay so if ball top height is uh, you can see that uh, you can say that if paddle bottom height if paddle bottom height is little bit greater than or equal to or more greater than we can see that if paddle bottom height is greater than or equal to balls top height top height then we can see right now we can see that ball's top height is greater than paddle's bottom height okay paddle's bottom height is this you can see that ball's top height is greater so if it's this much then it's not a collision if it touches then ball's top height okay is equal to paddle bottom height if it goes inside this one that means that ball's top height is lesser than paddle bottom height okay so now it's a collision and this was also a collision by the way if it's equal or greater than then it's a collision all right so that's some logic for collision and similarly it's from left and right also so if let's take it from left all right so uh, we can say that if ball right you can see that we at uh, the ball's right part is touching this paddle okay so now you can get more uh, it and more clearly so if distance from left of game box to ball's right okay left distance from left of game box to ball's right is greater than distance of left of game box to paddle left 
okay you can see that right now it's smaller distance is smaller okay right of game box is uh, right right of ball is smaller right of ball is smaller but if it becomes bigger right of ball is become bigger and again again and again and if it becomes equal to right of ball okay right of ball and left of paddle are equal then it's a collision right it's a collision if right of ball is greater than left of paddle then it's also a collision okay so this is what it what it's it i must have mentioned equal to sign also but you get but you get the logic okay so this is the logic for this left side again if i assume that right side of the ball hits the paddle okay why am i taking all directions because we have to build the same logic for user also and computer also both will have different directions for ball hitting okay that's why i'm explaining this logic and they will be used in both the paddles okay so now you can see that again if the left side of ball is greater than right side of paddle then it's not a collision but if left side of ball is less than is less than this paddle the right side of this paddle then it's a collision okay less than or equal to so you can say that paddles right must be greater than or equal to left side of ball okay this is what the fourth logic now we have to combine all of them because collision can happen in all of the directions so you can watch i have written again same things okay that if paddle top paddle top is lesser than game bot, uh, ball bottom then it's a collision if paddle bottom is greater than ball top then it's a collision if paddle left is less than ball right then it's a collision if paddle right is greater than or equal to i forgot to mention equal to all of them contain equal to sign also if paddle right is equal to or greater than ball left then it's a collision so these four logics will be used please watch this uh, uh, watch these few steps again if you don't get the logic you will definitely get the logic and i'll just share this ppt uh, with the repository okay don't worry about that now here's another logic okay here's another logic for user paddle okay so we will have two paddles okay we right now we have taken all directions but user paddle will hit the ball in like ball will come come from right to left okay from right to left it will hit a uh, user paddle so you can assume that on the right side of user paddle ball will hit and again for the computer we can say that in the left side of computer paddle the ball will hit okay both logics are different for this case so now if for user paddle i'm talking about user paddle this will be very important this formula will be used okay these angles i have assumed these angles okay you can, you could have chosen any other angle but 45 degree is a good angle because if the ball hits in some angle i'll move the ball back with 45 degrees okay this will be the logic and same for plus 45 degree if the ball moves in some angle if, if the ball comes to the paddle in some angle in the bottom direction you can say this uh you can say the bottom direction then it will move plus 45 degree more bottom okay so yeah this logic will work that way so i'll explain this right now so assume so assume this is the paddle this is the paddle and this is the paddle x center and uh, okay i did a mistake it's actually paddle y and uh, basically yeah it's a x center but right now just assume this okay so uh, i'm just taking it as not this we have to take it as this y okay we have to assume for y right now so if balls y center okay same is for this ball also so uh, i'll just take a minute let me just arrange this because this ppt was a little bit wrong okay uh, let's see the live chat also um good evening everyone <laughs> um actually i was so busy right now i forgot to check the live chat all right so also this is the balls y center we want the balls y center balls y center and and and, and 
pedals y center all right now i'll just take it a reference circle so you get more precise understanding so this is the y axis you can say that this black ball this black uh, this grayish ball represents what uh, let me change the color i'll just change the color to something red okay sorry yeah so you can see that this red this red dot okay red dot this is a dot not a ball okay so this red dot basically represents what center of this paddle in y axis okay that's why it's paddle y center right that's why it's paddle y center now again same for the ball if i just copy this and paste it here you can say that this red dot in the ball which is, represents center of ball in y axis okay again same for this ball and same for this ball all right so just see the levels of these dots if this dot and this dot are in same level you can see that since these two dots are in same level then the ball is hitting exactly in the center of the paddle you can say that the ball is hitting exactly in the center of the paddle because this dot and this dot are in exact center sorry i made a little bit of a uh, mistake here okay so now i guess it is easy to check yeah you can say that this uh, this red dot and this red dot are in one line that means that paddle y center is equal to paddle uh, ball y center okay that means the ball is hitting exactly in the center of the paddle okay that's the logic for this center ball again if the ball y center is lesser than the paddle y center then the ball is upward then the ball is upward okay that simply means the ball is this one this one this first one okay but if the paddle y center is lesser than the ball y center that means the ball is downward okay the ball is below so this simply means that it is the third ball okay third ball so these were the three cases which we are uh, which we require and now just see that if the ball is the first one we'll simply uh, send the ball back in minus 45 degree angle okay we'll send the ball back in minus 45 degree angle if the ball hits the center if the ball hits the center then we'll simply send the ball back okay we'll simply send the ball back okay the ball will go back send again okay so if the ball is coming in this direction and the paddle is this one suppose so ball will hit the center and then it will go back okay in same angle that is 180 degree opposite direction okay but if the ball hits the top of the paddle suppose this is the paddle okay and the ball hits top of the paddle top of the paddle then ball will move in minus 45 degree above all right if the ball hits bottom of the paddle bottom of the paddle then ball will move in 45 degree downwards okay so that's why i have written minus 45 degree and 45 degree okay so because the, uh, according to the logic minus angle is upwards and positive angle is downward okay that's why i have written this all right so this is for the user paddle please watch this uh, uh, part again if you didn't understand this logic for user paddle all right again we had we can do the same for uh, this computer paddle okay again i have to make changes ball y center ball y center ball y center all right and yeah this mistake is also to be changed and yeah i have mentioned these conditions also you can see that if uh, ball y center is less than pedal y center then this is the first ball if the ball y center is equal to pedal y center that it is the center ball and if it's uh, greater than the pedal y center then it's the third ball so this logic will work for these cases okay these cases will be used in if else conditions after this same is for uh, the ai let me change this first so this is y center this is y center and this is y center all right and again ball y center ball y center and pedal y center and i have to rotate this all right sorry uh, i wasted a little bit time but that's okay 
all right all right so now you can say that acha we have to make this center also just a minute guys and also uh, please uh, i i made this presentation it took a very long time you can see that there are a few more slides and it took really low, really took me hours to build this because i actually built the logic first and then i made the ppt out of it so uh, if you like this presentation hit the smash hit smash the like button and also tell me in live chat how is this presentation looking all right so uh, yeah now you can see that let's again bring our dot okay so this is again our dot so you can say that this is our paddle y center okay this gray dot represents paddle y center all right again if i bring this to center of this ball this is what ball y center okay ball y center center of ball in y axis that's what i meant same is for this one same is for this one and same is for this one okay so again the same logic will be built if balls y center if balls y center is lesser than this uh, this gray dot then definitely ball is above okay you can assume now you can assume that if okay i have to move it a little bit here so you can assume that if this is our computer this is our computer paddle and if the ball hits from the top from the top then the center of ball is definitely lesser than the center of paddle y okay so that's why it hits the top and this logic will work for first ball again if the ball y center and pedal y center are equal then they are in same level it will hit in exact center then the ball will move move back simply 180 degrees backwards okay 180 degrees backwards if it hits the top if ball hits the top of the pedal then it will move back minus 135 degree okay again same will be done for the bottom like if the ball hits if the ball hits if this is the paddle if the ball hits the bottom of the paddle if the ball hits the bottom of the paddle then it will move 135 degrees downwards 135 degrees downwards that will be the logic and you can see that i, I have written the conditions also these conditions will be used for ai paddle okay user paddles have separate condition because ball will move in different direction like ball will hit in the left side ball will hit in the right side of the user paddle okay ball will hit in the right side of the user pedal and for the ai ball will hit in the left side of the ai pedal okay ball will hit the left side of the ai pedal this diagram shows it clearly all right so this was the logic for collision okay this was the logic for collision so let me just write a few lines of code so that you can get the collision logic and then uh, we'll apply this for okay let's first write the code all right so you can see that i have written a few lines of code this was already written in the first day by the way all right uh, so i'm just splitting the screen and you can see that our game is very responsive it will work for all, all screen sizes if you play the game as a website on your mobile device it will definitely work very fine all right so after this i had to make some changes which i did previously um all right so after this just add a few more lines which i wanted to add first of all uh, i have actually written capital p for this ai pedal but here you can see that we have uh, small p okay we have small p so i can do one thing i can select everywhere i have written ai pedal so just select one ai pedal and press control f2 so it will select all the ai pedal uh, text wherever i have written in my code so this is a very short trick which i have used so just change every ai capital p pedal to ai capital sorry ai small p pedal okay so i have converted this capital p into small p because of this small error okay so after this that's what i wanted to uh, show you and we have to actually define a few more things so i'll just write comment here and then we can write we wanted to show the user score we want to up update the user score okay so user core a uh, user score is definitely targeted from which id 
you can see that we have the user score id so user score is mentioned inside this id so i'll just press document okay so yeah we have targeted the user score id again we can do the same for uh, the ai score id okay so ai score is this id second one okay we have targeted both of them and that was it for the definition after this after this we'll write our further logic okay we'll write our further logic so right now uh, what i have done i have simply called the reset function okay i have simply called the reset function so instead of reset function i'm just commenting it out and i'll simply write vx equals negative of vx okay same you can say that the ball will bounce back if it's the left and if it's the right it will again bounce back okay so yeah you can see that the ball will wo won't go outside of this page right now okay because we aren't calling reset all right so yeah this was the basic changes right now we are just assuming it the ball will revert back okay because i want to check the working of the paddle first so after this first we need to see that ball is in which side of the pedal okay ball is in which side okay so simply for that we'll we'll apply a logic just assume this presentation again okay i need to show you one more slide like if you can say that ball is in right side then it will hit the ai pedal it's assumed to be hitting the ai pedal if it ball is in the left side then it will be assumed to hit the user pedal okay so that's how we'll actually judge whose score it is that's why i am assuming and the movement of the user uh, paddles all right so after this you can see this presentation which paddle will hit the ball so we can see that the distance from left of the game box to the ball center is this okay the, is this distance and game box width by 2 is this half of the width okay this half of the whole width of game box so you can say that if game box width by 2 that this half width of game box is greater than the ball then definitely ball is on user side because i have uh, specified the user on left side if again the same logic if the ball is on right side that is ball center distance from ball center from the game box left to to the game box left and game box width by two okay you can say that if uh, uh, game box width by two i'll just cut this okay i'm sorry i'll just save it here okay so we can say that if this distance from center to the left is greater than game box width by two then definitely ball is on right side you can see that the ball is on right side so this is the logic and this the same logic will be used here so let me just write the code and then our logic will work okay so you can simply write the logic uh, i guess we can write it here it's off okay it will cause no issues so let me just comment so that i can get what changes i made okay yeah okay so this is a short trick which i use okay so that i get what changes i made all right or you could it helps me okay so yeah here we will check which pedal is active right now that means if ball is on left side then user pedal is active if ball is on right side then ai pedal is active so simply we can check that ball dot offset left you can actually compare it from the center of ball or you can check from the ball offset left okay so uh, right now i'm just assuming from ball offset left no need to uh, check it from the okay so this is the distance and if this distance is greater than game box by two then definitely ball is on right side or left side okay so let me change this for the first one also if the distance is uh if the width is greater than the ball left okay if the width is greater than the ball left then definitely ball is on left side so this will be the logic and let me just write the same code for this one so ball dot offset left is targeted and if it is less than half width then it's on the left side that is the user pedal if it's greater than the uh, half width then it's on ai side so we can simply write game box left game box dot offset width 
it will give us the width of the game box and then we'll divide it by 2 because we want the half width if it's greater than half width sorry if left side of ball ball uh, distance of left side of ball is lesser than half of the width then it's in what side it's in what side it's in user side okay it's in user side so user paddle will be active so we can simply call the user paddle variable which we created else it's the ai paddle okay so this is the ternary operator which i have used you can use this one all right so simply it says that if the distance of left side distance of left side is lesser than the width by two then definitely it's on left side okay ball is on left side else it's on right side if it's on right side then it's the ai paddle if it's on left side if ball is on left side then it's the user paddle that's the logic and now let's check if it's working or not so what i can do is i can print this console.log paddle okay and let me just inspect this and in console you can see that we have the ai paddle we got the ai paddle and okay it's printing the ai paddle because left side yeah we can see that if it's on user side we are giving getting the user paddle division right side ai paddle okay it's changing you can see that it's ai paddle now user paddle now okay so now I, our code is working and it's uh, actually running every time because the game loop is an infinite function it's called infinite times that's why okay so i'll just comment this out it's not required we check that it's working so now we got which one is active which one is active okay so now let me just close this again so now we got the active pedal okay we got the active pedal after this uh, let's create a few variables one variable is ball center in y axis okay let ball center because it's going to be changed again and again that's why i'm declaring it inside this function game loop okay so ball center in y axis is what it's simply ball offset top ball dot offset top okay ball dot offset top plus balls height divided by two that will give us this is the balls offset top distance plus half the height it will actually give us the distance from center of ball in y axis to the top of the game box okay so we can simply write ball dot offset height divided by two okay so simply it will give us the center of ball in y axis from the top of the game box same we want the paddle center y so again it will work the same way paddles offset top distance plus half the height of paddle okay so this will give us the uh, distance of center of the paddle in y axis from the top of the game box all right so we have created two variables after this let's assume the first angle to be zero so we are creating a variable named as angle angle equals zero so this is our variable and we are going to change the angle and it will be used later on okay so now after this we can create a function named as check collision so whenever a collision will happen this function uh, i mean this function will return true value okay so we are going to create this function and inside this we have to provide the paddle which is active okay so the whole whole variable will be sent if the user paddle is active then this element will be targeted if the ai paddle is active then this element will be targeted that's what i wanted to say now we have the paddle now we have the paddle uh, now we have the paddle inside this check collision function so we have to create the check collision also so let's create it above this one okay so we can create this function this function name is function check collision inside this we will get the paddle so uh, let's assume that the paddle is uh, name is active paddle okay so the parameter is active paddle and we have sent the name i mean the uh, I, uh, the element whole element like if user paddle is active user paddle will go inside this function if ai paddle is active ai paddle will go inside this function okay so now it's taken as active paddle inside this we have taken active paddle name okay so now you could have directly written paddle also it's just a variable name okay so parameter is active paddle and the whatever the paddle is active user paddle is active user paddle will uh, come inside this as the ai paddle will come inside this okay so now we need to check 
let's first file uh, find some variables so we want to find the ball top okay we want to find the ball top so it's nothing but offset top if you want to find the ball bottom it's nothing but balls offset top plus balls height okay that is uh, diameter okay but in javascript logic we have to mention the height all right again balls left is uh, a distance from left side and again ball right is distance from left plus its width all right so this is for the ball again we are going to do the same for paddle top that is distance from top again battle bottom distance from top plus the height again from left side distance from left side again for right distance from left plus the width okay so these four will be covered and i have explained this in the presentation okay so just watch the video from uh, start again because these were covered in the start all right so this is enough and let's check if it's working or not so right now if i just print console.log and again if i print paddles okay so let's check if it's working or not so if i inspect this and in console you can see that yeah we are getting everything and suppose if i want to see the ball's position right i'm just assuming the ball's position so you can see that the ball's position is changing continuously that's why i'm getting this uh, continuous change okay because this function is called again and again in uh, check collision is called again and again okay it's been called again and again but this if condition will be called when this is true okay right now we haven't written anything true and false so that's why if this if condition is not called but yeah this function is being called again and again because we have specified it here inside the game loop so this function is called again and again and we are getting these uh, prints okay so suppose uh, if i check the same for paddles so you can see that the paddle is almost constant okay you can see that this is constant this is constant whatever the paddle is active this is constant okay but if i try to move this user pedal suppose if i try to move in downward direction you can say that down, now there is a manipulation now there is a manipulation but now uh, if you normally see that they are in stable position so we are getting stable outputs okay so now uh, our code is working fine and we got the locations now what to do with these locations simple logic i explained it here uh, you can watch this slide this slide okay i have said that if these four conditions are true then there is a collision okay we are going to write the same conditions we have specified variables okay so we'll simply write if if okay and inside this we'll write ball bottom is greater than paddle top and and ball top is lesser than paddle bottom okay this is the second condition okay first condition second condition and then the third condition is and and ball right is greater than paddle left this is the third condition okay paddle left and again ball left is lesser than pedal right okay so these four conditions are mentioned here you can see that these are, are these were the only ones which i mentioned and these are the required ones okay so now our logic is built and if something happens then if something happens if any if all of them if all of them are true then definitely there's a collision so i can return uh return to and for checking i can simply print go console dot log collision detected else we can say that collision is not detected so i'm right now i'm just returning false and one more thing i'll just i'll i'll just print cons collision detected if there is a collision so let's check and yeah you can see that if it collided and if i try to collide it you can say that yeah collision detected if i just try to collide it again yeah collision is detected collision is detected yeah collision is detected okay okay it's a bit difficult for me right now yeah so you can see the collision is detected whenever i try to touch it with the ball okay so yeah collision is working fine and now what we are trying to do is this is the true and false sent whenever there is a collision so whenever there is a collision true will come here since it is true this if condition will work 
okay this if condition will only work when check collision returns to okay if the paddle hits the ball then uh, definitely it's a collision and now we are going to change the direction of ball because the paddle hit the ball okay that's why i have written this if condition now we have checked that ball is hitting the paddle okay ball is hitting the paddle inside this we have to check if it's from the user side then we'll apply from left side okay we'll uh, we'll actually uh, if if it's from the user paddle if it's from the user paddle then we'll send the ball in 45 degree directions if the ball hits in ai pedal then we'll send the ball in 135 degree directions okay so that's the logic so let's check this by if pedal equals equals user pedal okay that's the simple thing which we are going to use else if else if pedal equals ai pedal these two equate these two conditions are there okay these two conditions are going to be used now after this we simply write v okay let's just first write this if it's for user pedal now i want to change the direction in what logic i have written three conditions you can see that there okay i have written three conditions for this you can see that if the ball hits the user pedal you can see that i have three conditions that the ball returns back ball is in minus 45 degree plus 45 degree okay that's what the logic i used so after this after this i have to write the same in code okay so what are the three conditions if ball center y is greater than paddle center y then this condition will follow up else if ball center y is greater than this then this condition will follow up okay the, then the paddle center then the second uh, third third circle will actually work this circle will work for first condition this circle will work second condition this circle will work and third condition is if they are equal okay if they are equal then definitely there will be a else case okay then definitely there will be a else case simply write else okay so just for this case if ball center is less than paddle center if ball center ball center is less than paddle center okay the first circle then this case will run then this case will run if ball center ball center is greater than the paddle center paddle center then this case will run okay if it's equal then third case okay if it's equal then third case because only one is remaining so if this is the case then we'll write the angle as you want the angle as minus 45 degrees to make 45 degree i'll just write math dot pi math dot pi okay sorry m a t h math is an inbuilt uh, method in javascript math dot pi so for getting 45 degree we'll divide it by 4 okay okay we divided by 4 that is uh, uh, 180 by 4 that's 45 okay so we get 40 45 degree minus 45 degree i'm sorry and again for the bottom one we want the plus 45 degrees so that's why i have written plus 45 degree again for the between one that is the same angles we are simply writing angle zero degree or you could have written uh, another angle like i have mentioned here 180 but i guess this will work for zero okay let's check let's check all right so same will be done for ai paddle but for 135 degrees okay so for that we can simply multiply the uh, i'll just copy this i'll just copy this and i'll paste it and i'll multiply this by three okay because minus 135 and 135 all right so this was the logic and let's check it for angles these angles okay so if i just save this and let's check this first okay let's okay well, one more thing one more thing we need to convert these angles into normal values you can see that these uh, velocities are not degrees these are not in degrees vx and vi are not in degrees so to converting uh, to convert them in degrees we can simply do one thing uh, that's simply we can write vx it's simply what v cos theta okay x direction is what v cos theta we have divided the v uh, v velocity into components vx and vy so vx is nothing but v cos theta so v into and we have to convert that angle into cos theta so we can simply write math dot cos okay cos and that angle so it will simply return the value in cos terms 
again if i do the same for y it's nothing but v sin theta okay and yeah i'll just make it m a t h okay again i can write it as m a t h all right save kar lena so after this let's try this so if i try to hit the ball yeah you can see that now ball is changing its direction if i hit the ball now now the ball is changing its direction if i hit the ball now the ball is changing the direction okay so yeah it's working fine and after this yeah after this we we need one more thing we need to change the ball speed every time it hits it has a collision so for that you can change the speed by here you can simply convert it to something else if i just write it as 0.2 it will change the speed by little bit but if i write it as 2 3 4 or something a bigger number it will definitely increase a speed by a lot of magnitude okay so that's what it's for so it's for the speed if you want to change the speed in every collision it will increase the speed then it will increase the difficulty of your game okay so that's what the logic for this one after this what only one thing is required that is the computer pedal you can see that the ai pedal or computer pedal is not working right now so for making it move we can simply do one thing uh let's explain uh, let me just explain this first so let's track the ai paddle movement okay let's track the ai paddle movement so i am going to apply the simple logic okay the simple logic what it says that suppose this is the paddle this is the paddle and this is the paddle offset top this is the paddle offset height okay this is the height of the paddle okay so this is for the paddle and again the ball offset top is this this distance okay this blue line so the distance between these its center and this its center and this is ball offset top okay we need to add one more thing we need to add one more thing we are actually moving the paddle in such a way we are moving the ball uh, computer paddle in such a way that it matches with the balls offset okay it matches with the balls height or you can say the uh, the ball it moves with the ball okay if the ball is here then the ai paddle will move upwards if the ball is here the ai paddle will move downwards that's what the logic okay you can apply different formulas too but this will also work so one more thing we need to add uh, ai paddle offset top okay ai paddle offset top okay so what what does this formula say what does this formula say forget about this one forget about this green what does this formula say okay if i just remove that what does this formula say this simply means let's let's check okay uh, it says that ai paddle top plus we need to shift in such a way we need to shift the top in such a way from the top it will it this distance will change in such a way let suppose right uh, offset top okay i'll just copy this and paste it okay this is my offset top now we have added it with the ball offset top that is this height so i'll just copy it and paste it okay so this is the total height total height right now we have the total height okay now minus pedal offset top minus pedal offset top that is again this again this okay we need to subtract this okay we need to subtract this and this is the parallel offset top okay i have added two times because it was required because we need to update the old height with the new height so old height will be there that is old paddle top will already be there but this ball offset top is decreased by some this value so i'll just remove this right now so now the ball is uh, balls offset top is this then then we need to decrease the height by two also so if i just copy this and paste it and i'll just decrease the height by two suppose this much okay so this will be decreased by this much so this is what our formula says this height is required so now if i just change this height to this height okay it simply says that the uh, paddle will shift this much paddle will shift this much and you can see that now it's ready for collision you can see that now it's ready for collision that's why this formula is used and you can build your own logic 
बट या दिस फॉर्मूला विल बेसिकली ब्रिंग द बैडल टू द बॉल्स पोजिशन ओके बॉल्स हाइट सो यू कैन से दैट इट्स ऑलमोस्ट सेम इट्स ऑलमोस्ट सेम बट नाउ यू माइट बी एज्यूमिंग दैट या इफ इट्स ऑलमोस्ट सेम देन वेन विल द कंप्यूटर लूज definitely we will build logic for that but yeah this formula will be used this formula is very important just watch this one carefully and you can manipulate this presentation you can uh, actually write on pen paper how this formula will work okay and this will really help you all right so now come back here and we are going to apply the same logic here here uh, i'll just use a delay okay ai delay it will actually manipulate my answer okay it will actually manipulate by answer uh, by a few uh, points okay so suppose previously if it was one now it will be 0 0.9 0 0.8 0 0.7 this much okay so we are actually introducing some errors basically it will actually not completely come here it will be a little bit above okay that means that the ball might get crossed okay might get crossed it won't collide might get crossed and just simply go outside okay that's what it means so i have simply introduced an error which will simply change the answer manipulate the answer by some points okay so it will decrease if you choose something by one um, greater than one then it will definitely make the paddle go more downwards okay for this case it will go for more downwards all right same will do for other case also like if the ball is upwards and the paddle is downwards then definitely paddle will uh, go upwards with the same formula okay with the same formula it's the same for that one all right so let me just write that formula AI delays. I have chosen point three. You can choose any other thing. Okay, any other uh, variable if you want. After this, AI paddle dot style. We need to change the distance from top. Okay, we need to change the distance from top with the position of ball. And what have what have I written? I've simply written AI paddle top. The old old one. Okay, AI paddle offset top. The old distance must be there. and we have to increment this distance okay so that's why i have written that old distance must be there then ball dot offset top minus ai paddle dot offset top minus ai paddle dot of set height by 2 this is what i have written in that formula okay i hope this is correct yeah this is correct into we'll multiply this by the delay that's it we'll multiply this by delay or you could have subtracted also it won't make much differences but yeah that's what it meant all right so now let's check let's check that is it working or not so now you can see that the game is working and the game is working it's colliding it's colliding yeah and it's colliding almost every time you can see that the ball is colliding every time every time you can see that it's moving with the ball okay so this is uh, this is what we uh, why we use this formula it's almost correct okay but we introduce some delay that's why it might differentiate a little bit okay so this will actually be uh, make it difficult for computer to Uh, match with the ball in uh, high speeds of the ball okay because there will be huge changes all right so after this only one thing is required that is updation of score scores can be updated by simply just incrementing it okay you can say that if the ball touches um where is it okay this is the check collision and yeah here we have to update the course so if the ball reaches the left end and the uh, user pedal hasn't touched it that means that user has lost so we have to increase the point okay so we have to reset the game okay you can see that now game has reset and one more thing that we want to increase the point of ai computer okay so for that we can simply we have targeted above ai score okay we have targeted above the ai score so if it reaches ai score is incremented by 1 okay so you can see now the ai score is incremented by 1 same for the user score so for user score you will increment the user score by 1 okay so we have changed the user score and do one more thing just remove this okay so now if i just play this you can see that the game is working fine 
and but if i lose you can see that that i am losing and the points are increasing okay but the computer is almost impossible for normal speed of the ball but if the ball speed increases and you are a pro player then definitely the computer will lose and you can also manipulate this value you can manipulate this value by you can make it minus or something like so it will actually manipulate this computer paddles movement okay so this was the logic which i have used and this was the logic i have used and you can see that it's working pretty fine okay it's working pretty fine you can say that it's, it's pretty fine so i'll just upload this source code on github and you can access this source code there only all right and one more thing i'll just download this i'll just download this pdf in pdf format i'll just download this in pdf format okay so it becomes easier for you all to understand this and yeah i'll just share this to the first i'll paste it to the folder okay first i'll paste it to the folder and then i'll upload this to my github git add git commit okay i have to change the commit to day two and then git push uh okay we have to push the code so yeah push the code and i guess the file will also be uploaded i'm not sure the file is the file uploaded or not let's check okay you can see that the pdf is also available here which i uploaded and you can watch this uh, you can download this pdf for reference that is this presentation for reference and the source code is up uploaded in this repository so uh, you can check out this repository if you want the source code and if you don't find the source code you can simply go to my profile github uh, github.com slash viraj014 this is my profile inside the repositories you will get cheers underscore pong and yeah here's the source code or yeah definitely you'll get this if you don't find this source code you can simply search it here js underscore pong okay you'll find that and one more thing in the description you might find a link and you'll definitely find a link they have provided uh for uh, full stack bootcamp course okay this is a full stack bootcamp course provided by geeks for geeks and it's a free course free bootcamp you can just go to that link and it will take you that pay uh, to this page practice.geeksforgeeks.org slash courses slash full dash bootcamp dash a full stack bootcamp okay full dash stack dash bootcamp so in this page and just enroll and start this course here you'll get all the material for the full stack bootcamp uh, full uh, full stack development required okay and in the live uh, part you can see that here we have previous recordings which were actually hosted by me and some other mentors and here you can see that here uh, in 21st january and 22nd january 6 pm we have two upcoming sessions the topic is let's build a real-time weather app using javascript and weather api part one and part two and the links will be shared uh, shared here only okay so these were uh, these are zoom based sessions and you can watch these sessions the links will be provided here if you aren't able to watch these sessions due to any reason you can check the recordings also so the recordings will also be available here okay so don't forget to enroll for this course and uh, definitely more awesome projects will be coming up in this uh, bootcamp full stack bootcamp course and on the geeks for geeks development youtube channel so don't forget to subscribe to this channel geeks for geeks development and if you want to contact me you can contact me where you can contact me on instagram at the rate harsher underscore 311 this is my instagram handle you can message me anytime all right so i hope you like this game and now it's complete and you can see that it works on every every design okay every uh, width and height you can uh, work on any device if you want you can play this game on any device and yeah it's working fine okay you can see that i can play this game and definitely i it's hard to lose uh it it's hard to lose for a computer but uh, you can say that i have applied the logic but you can also make it a multiplayer game the way i have uh, updated the position of this user pedal you can also update the position of the other players by by targeting it using this way you can use this logic also like you can say in the javascript in the javascript i have targeted this by key up handler key down handler you can say that key up handler key key down handler and here we have applied the logic for that if 
we have applied the logic for that you can say yeah that if z is pressed then change the position of user pedal if z if x is pressed then change the q position of user pedal you can apply the same for other player okay that's very simple logic you can use but right now i have used ai because it's more difficult all right so i hope you like this video and we'll see you in the next one till then bye bye